kids, here's the best and flower here, hope you're well. Now, I've been uh, extremely lucky in the last few months in that I've borrowed quite a few uh, Triumph motorcycles for long periods of time and really got to know them. And the bikes that I've really loved, the couple that stick in my mind, are the uh, Bonneville T100 and the uh, Triumph Street Scrambler. Both the 900cc power bikes and uh, I just love the way that they looked in terms of their retro looks and the way they handled and so on. They were my favourite bikes. And I had a number of people ask me, uh, what about the T120? Uh, what do you think of that? Well, I'd only ever ridden the T120 very briefly uh, and that was back in April of last year. So I've done an initial review of that bike and you can go and have a look at that uh, uh, that review to see what I thought of it but I'm really pleased to say that now uh, Triumph have lent me this this is another T120 and I've got this for a few weeks so I can really get to know the bike properly and I can do a proper comparison of this versus the the smaller Bonnevilles the 900cc machines so in this video uh, what I'm going to do is concentrate really on comparing this against the T100 uh, and let you know what my uh, sort of initial feelings are between the two bikes so stick around and stay tuned so of course the obvious difference between this and these smaller bikes is of course the size of engine. This is the 1200cc twin uh, engine uh, and this is what uh, Triumph badged the high torque uh, machine. And I'll go through the specs a little bit later when I do a walk around and compare it directly with the T100. But what I can say is uh, even though I had the T100 for long term loan hello, some uh, time ago, about uh, two months ago, uh, I can instantly feel that this engine is much more punchy than that one. And the other thing that instantly strikes me that's better than the T100 on this, uh, the brakes. The uh, the brakes on the T100 I found somewhat lacking. It just had the single disc on there. This has the twin disc and it feels absolutely fine on braking. And one of the reasons why I love the uh, T100 was its uh, lightweight chuckability, or at least I thought so compared to the T120 that as I say at that point I'd only ridden for an hour. Well I have to say having now ridden this bike for uh, about the same amount of time but now with uh, you know a better understanding of what the T100 is like, I have to say you don't really notice the extra weight of this. It's only something like 15 kilograms different which I suppose is a fair amount of weight but uh, once you're on the move, you really don't notice it. Uh, it'll be interesting to see, once I've had this for a while and do my long-term review, what it's like to actually shift it around on the driveway or, or at car parks and so on, and see if that makes a difference. But at the moment, from a riding point of view, I can't feel that it weighs any different to the T100, to be honest. Now, as I say, I will resist doing a complete review uh, on this bike at this time, because I have done that initial impressions review already, and you can go back and look at that. But uh, just as a recap, what I can say is this bike is very comfortable. Uh, the clutch is supremely light, the gearbox is very nice to use, the mirrors work well, uh, the seat is nice and padded, uh, handlebars are in a nice position, it's just a, a really easy bike to ride. And it's very low as well, you can get your feet flat, up, flat on the floor, no problem at all, it's completely unintimidating. Uh, it's a lovely bike, I love the fact it's got built-in uh, heated grips, everything ab about it is nice. But I guess the big question is, is it worth the additional money over the T100? Well, I'm going to go and uh, pull in at the pub up here, show you around the bike, and uh, as I'm talking about the specs on this one, I'll talk about how they compare to the T100 and what extra you get for your money uh, on this bike. Right, let's stick her over here. So I have to say, yeah, she doesn't feel particularly weighty manoeuvring it around on this car park or anything like that, or, you know, very, very similar to the uh, T100. There we go. Right, here she is then, the uh, Triumph Bonneville T120, the 1200cc version of the retro bike. Lovely colour scheme, this. Looks great in the sunshine as well. So let me get my uh, other camera out and I'll talk you through the specs. Okay, here we go then. So, the uh, primary difference, as I say, between this, the T120 and the T100, is of course the engine. Uh, this being the 1200cc, the T100 having the 900cc engine. They're both badged as high torque. In terms of the numbers, this, the T120, puts out uh, 80 PS, around about 80 horsepower, uh, whereas the T100 puts out 55. So this one's 25 horsepower, or thereabouts, uh, more powerful than the T100. And I have to say, you do notice the difference quite immediately. Uh, this one has considerably more shove. Not the T100 doesn't have enough shove, but this has loads. When you want to overtake, you can really wind this thing up and the thing absolutely flies. It doesn't run out of puff, whereas the T100 feels like once you get to sort of illegal speeds, there's not much more to give, whereas, uh, whereas this feels like it will just keep going on and on. 
In terms of torque, this has 105 Newton meters, the T100 has 80 Newton meters, uh, and this one has that peak at 3100 RPM, T100 at 3230. So, this is a little bit more of a lazy engine as well, it just sort of lollops along, which is quite nice. Makes a very relaxed cruising. Uh, the other big difference, as I've already mentioned, is the brakes. This one has these twin discs up front, and it means that the thing really does stop absolutely fine. I'll just prove that there's another disc on that side, there we go. Whereas the T100 just has a single disc and didn't feel that good from a braking point of view. This feels fine. Seat height, the T100 790 millimeters, this one 785, so it's actually five mil lower, which is interesting. Uh, and I can get my feet absolutely flat square on the ground. It, gets, it makes it very confidence inspiring when you're on this. And uh, one of the interesting things is I thought that the T100 was the smaller bike, but actually when you look at the length of the machine, uh, let me see if I can find my figures, the wheelbase on this is 1445mm, the wheelbase on the uh, T100 is 1450 so <laughs> it's 5mm shorter this one, I mean again, 5mm, what difference does it make, but uh, technically it's actually not quite as long as the T100, so I'm going to stop calling the T100 the small bike, because it's not, it's, uh, if anything, it's slightly bigger physically. Weight wise, the T120 224 kilograms, which is 11 kilograms more than the T100 that comes in at 213 dry. But as I say, when, you, when you're on the move, you don't really notice that at all. It just, uh, it just feels absolutely fine. I think it looks brilliant in this red colour scheme as well. Um, one of the similarities is the tank, it's got the same tank. They both have 14.5 litre tank capacity. And um, they do these beautiful paint schemes. They both have the same sorts of paint schemes with these. Uh, beautiful hand-painted coach lines, which if you look closely, you can actually see the sort of paintbrush lines in there. It looks really good. Love those little touches. Uh, the T120 has two riding modes, basically rain and road, whereas the T100 has no riding modes. And uh, the price of this one is uh, £10,100 on the road, and the T100 is 8600 so this is 1500 quid more. So you're thinking, is 1500 quid worth it just for the extra power? Well, you get some extra bits and pieces as well. Uh, this comes as standard with heated grips, and they've got their sort of integrated arrangement here. If I can focus on that, there we go, a little button there. That makes it uh, look very neat, and I think uh, I think heated grips should be a legal requirement on bikes. <laughs> so you get that as well over and above. This also has a six-speed gearbox, whereas the T100 only has the five-speed, uh, although the sixth gear is pretty much feels like an overdrive, if you know what I mean. Uh, and also as standard, this comes with a centre stand, which you don't get on the T100, it's just tucked under there. Really useful for maintenance on the chain and stuff like that, so I think you can probably get it as an option on the T100, but you get it as standard here. So for your extra 1500 quid, you're getting the extra power, you're getting the heated grips, you're getting the centre stand, you're getting the riding modes, and you're getting better brakes. So actually, all that lot together for 1500 quid. I think it's probably worth it, you know. And I'm going to feel myself suddenly saying that actually the T120 is probably my favourite bike. But uh, let me live with it for a bit longer and uh, learn some of the quirks before I absolutely make that uh, make that assessment. Okay, that's enough looking at the bike. Let's uh, jump back on and ride a little bit more. Love the twin dials on this. She sounds fantastic as well. Now, although I described it as a, a sort of a lazy engine cruiser, certainly it encourages you to ride it that way, which I think is a great thing, actually. But actually, the thing goes like a stink if you want to. I mean, you can get 70 miles an hour in second, no problem. Not that I'm proposing that you do that, but uh, it really does uh, come up with some shove when you need it. And it's all, again, in the, you know, in the real world sort of speeds. It's no good in my mind having power bands at 130 miles now, you're never going to access them. But this thing from 0 to 70 just pulls like a train. I'm really looking forward to uh, getting to know this bike better, because um, already, having only been riding it, riding it again for a, a couple of hours, I'm, I'm really liking it. The, the comfort, the riding position is lovely and the seat is lovely. Mirrors work well, I love this dash, the twin dials really do it for me. One of the things that the um, Street Scrambler didn't have was the single dial, whereas the T100 has the double. Uh, which I just think look great um, and I think that's a, I know it's a ridiculous reason but it's one of the things that draws me towards this bike and the T100 because when you're on the bike you're, you're looking at these things all the time and these things are just a thing of beauty. Of course it would be interesting to see what the uh, longevity is like of the chrome plated parts on the bike and also the aluminium, brushed aluminium finished engine cases and so on. I've heard a few stories about those um, 
corroding so we'll see over the fullness of time how those stand up but you can get chrome plated engine covers and stuff which uh, again I might be tempted to do if I was going for the T120 and going for the chrome look you might as well have as much chrome as possible just looks a beautiful bike I think a white van excellent I'm sure I could just get by him quickly That's one of the things that this bike is good for. If you decide you just need to quickly squirt by somebody, you can do it, and there's plenty of power to do so. Whereas I did find on the Street Scrambler and on the T100, you did have to, you know, plan it a bit and make sure you've got a massive gap. Whereas this, you can just squirt in and out of little gaps quite easily. Oops, just noticed I had the hazard lights on. I don't know how long they've been on for, but uh, <laughs> that does allow me to point out that uh, another thing this has is hazard lights on this little switch here. And the button here with the M on is for the modes changing. Uh, that's about it, you've got the information button as usual and the heated grips that I love are integrated into the grips and uh, it's just such a great thing to have on bikes, I think all bikes should have that as I said got a chance to overtake before the 30 the other thing I've noticed about this bike that uh, is slightly different to the T100 and the Street Scrambler is actually the way you have to muscle it around the corners a bit more I don't know if the geometry has changed much, I assume it must be certainly uh, I mentioned the wheelbase is a bit narrower on this so it implies that the rake and trail settings are somewhat different um, but that has the effect of this needing more muscling around the corners and feeling actually much more stable it feels like it wants to go in a straight line most of the time and to get it to go around a corner you really have to counter steer now I actually quite like that feeling, I know it's not for everybody but uh, if you're going to be taking the bike on longer rides then I think that sort of feeling of stability is actually a nice thing for touring so possibly if, uh, if you're in the uh, market for a bike that's a bit better for longer journeys then the T120 certainly with its extra power would be nice but also the handling I think uh, is just a, a bit more stable, a bit more um, confidence inspiring for longer journeys I think if that makes sense, I'm not sure it does but uh, I actually quite like a bike that feels stable and this feels very stable so that's pretty much it for my uh, first comparison of the uh, T120 against the T100. I, I hope you found that of some use. Now as I say, I've got this bike for a few weeks. I've been very lucky in that uh, Trump have lent this bike to me. Um, so I'm going to get to ride the bike a lot over the next few weeks and really get to understand it. And uh, I'll be doing some more videos, of course, on the bike. Certainly when I've learned what some of the foibles are, because no bike's perfect, are they? And I'm sure I'll be able to find something about this bike that I don't like. But at the moment, I have to say I'm loving it. OK, I hope that's been of some interest to you, and I look forward to speaking to you next time. Until then, this has been the Missenden Flyer. Cheerio.